Massachusetts Congresswoman Lori Trahan is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. In her second term on Capitol Hill and facing the realities of a deeply divided Washington, can she deliver for her district with just a slim majority in the House? Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR in this Sunday morning. I'm Ed Harding along with New Center 5's political reporter Janet Wu. It is our first Sunday in June with a much, much, much brighter outlook for summer of 2021. And joining us via Zoom this morning is Congresswoman Lori Trahan. She represents the state's third congressional district, first taking office back in 2019. Congresswoman, it's great to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. Great to see you both. Good morning. So it does, as Ed said, looks like we're getting back to normal here in Massachusetts. So are you happy with the vaccination rate in your district specifically? Uh, and do you think Governor Baker has done enough to encourage people to get the vaccine? Yeah, you, look, Massachusetts has consistently led the nation in pandemic response over the last 15 months, including vaccine distribution uh, and the progress we've made, uh, namely that no community is in the red zone, including Lawrence, which happened last week, uh, shows that we also can't let up. Uh, you know, we need to continue targeting our vaccine outreach uh, to folks who may not be able to get to a mass vaccination site or maybe more vaccine hesitant, especially in communities like Lawrence who were hit hardest uh, by the virus. That's why continued investment in clinics that have evening and weekend hours and mobile units uh, like the one operated by Lawrence General Hospital and these pop-up vaccination sites that are run by so many of our community health centers are now more important than ever. So you're thinking it's more opportunity as opposed to resistance to the idea of a vaccine, like in cities like Lawrence or others that are still struggling in your district? Yeah, we know that we have folks that are hard to reach, um, that can't get to mass vaccination sites because of transportation issues, or they don't know where they're going to be, or they simply can't get there because they're working. Uh, and so I think we have to take a targeted approach at this point. This is when you have to go to where people are uh, to get them the vaccination. Uh, and that's why these mobile units that we're seeing in communities like Lowell and Lawrence and Haverhill are so important to getting that vaccination rate up. And at the same time, the, the mask mandate has been lifted here in Massachusetts. So overall, do you think that the governor has done a good job navigating the state through the pandemic from, from square one to where we are right now? Yeah, you know, this has been, uh, this has truly been a team effort. Uh, we have been working hand in glove, you know, with the governor's office to make sure that many of our communities like Methuen, uh, who were unfairly impacted by an outdated federal formula to get the relief uh, that they needed uh, and that's in line with similar sized cities, uh, and with the state house leadership, uh, making sure that we have transparency around how the American rescue funds are, are being spent. I mean, these are all important um, inputs to a, a partnership so that we can have the sort of statistics that we're so proud of right now here in Massachusetts. Do, do, you, do you still travel with your mask? I mean, I, I understand the mandate itself has been lifted, but do you travel with it? Do you have it on your person all the time? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's habit now for most folks, which is uh, uh, a testament to where we've been. Uh, but no where, matter where I have, it's on my wrist now uh, or it's in my purse. Uh, certainly yeah. it's on my face when I'm Mine's on an airplane. right here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. So um, let's go back to what you would just reference uh, about the money. There is an on ongoing debate about the $5 billion in federal stimulus money in Massachusetts. Uh, mm -hmm. The money is in hand. Governor Baker wants to distribute some of the money immediately to cities like Methuen, like you talked about, um, which was shortchanged in the last round. Democratic legislative leaders agree the money should go, but first they also want to say, can Methuen wait or should the money be immediately distributed before the legislature, you know, has a say on it? Yeah, so look, when Congress passed the American Rescue Plan, we provided long overdue relief uh, to our state and local governments uh, like those here in Massachusetts who had been really footing the bill for pandemic um, response without much federal assistance. And you know, part of that funding that we sent to state governments was designed to help communities like Methuen, uh, who were unfairly impacted, like I said, with that out, uh, outdated formula. And members of the federal delegation, and, and myself included, we've been working with the, um, the governor's office, with the administration, certainly with the legislature, to get at that issue rectified at the federal level, but also uh, it's heartening to see, you know, the governor and the leadership understand the importance of getting them this separate funding that they were promised. But should the uh, legislature, but, le legislative leaders have weigh in on this before the money's distributed, which they want, or should Governor Baker just give them the money right now as he was planning to do? 
You know, I, I wouldn't presume to tell them which approach is best to achieve that goal. Like my preference is that every everyone taking part in these discussions that we continue to work together and prioritize transparency and how these ARP funds are being spent. You know, that's the key to ensuring that the needs of folks that I represent in communities like Lawrence and Methuen and Lowell and Fitchburg and others are being met and that no one is left behind. And I think we're all rowing in the same direction in that regard in terms of the money being spent to ensure that no municipality is left behind. You have been vocal in your criticism of Facebook's aggressive expansion, including WhatsApp and a potential Instagram for children. So the question is, do you think more aggressive steps need to be taken by Congress to contain social media and I, I can see you're nodding your head already. If so, how? That's the, that, that, that takes it to the next level. Yeah, so, you know, when I left Capitol Hill as a staffer, um, my next job was at a tech company, a startup in Cambridge. And, but even beyond that, you know, I'm a mom to two young girls. They're 11 and seven, respectively. And I've learned uh, that you don't have to be a former tech executive to see that dominant platforms like Facebook and Google have been putting profits over people especially our children for a long, long time. And so my role on the Energy and Commerce Committee is, is to you know, hold these massive corporations accountable, both for targeting our children as their next frontier of growth and for their ad targeting po policies that you know, allow bad actors to spread disinformation or push harmful products mm -hmm. to vulnerable users. Is, 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 that a, is that a step that Congress needs to take? Absolutely, absolutely. And we're, you know, we're talking right now about finally putting together a comprehensive privacy bill um, that we'll get at protecting our children. Um, I've joined with Senator Markey in, in calling on Facebook to abandon its plans to roll out an Instagram for kids. Uh, and, and it's why, you know, we've been successful in getting YouTube kids to limit features designed to keep users online longer. I mean, any you know, working parent knows that that automatic uh, scroll that happens, the uh, the autoplay on the YouTube feature is really detrimental to our children. It just keeps them on the app longer. Uh, so I do think that Congress has a role to play. I have filed several pieces of, of legislation uh, and uh, the, the one, the most recent one being a couple of weeks ago on giving our researchers the ability to uh, to get at how ads are targeted uh, to people on these huge platforms uh, so that we can better understand the harmful effects of, of ad targeting pra uh, practices with these, um, with these large, large uh, platforms. Let's talk about politics up on Capitol Hill. As the midterm elections approach, Republicans are aggressively pushing to win back control of the House, as you know. This would certainly reduce your influence working for your district. How worried are you about this? And Will you be campaigning for other candidates outside of the state? Absolutely, I think we all have a role to play in ensuring that we keep this majority uh, in 2022. And and I, I know what history says uh, in terms of the uh, you know the low loss of seats that can happen in the incumbent party in a midterm election. But I have to tell you, we've never lived in times like the ones we're living in right now. And the American people are calling out for relief and they want an accelerated economic recovery. And I think that's why you're seeing bold initiatives, bold legislation coming from this administration and from us in the in the House and the Senate, because we want to, we have to deliver for the American people. And that's going to be the story that we tell in 2022. The reason why you were able to stay in your home and the reason why you had food to put on your, uh, your family's plate was because of the American Rescue Plan. The reason why uh, we are actually at a point where we vaccinated uh, over 50% of the American public, nearly 70% here in Massachusetts, is because of the American Rescue Plan. And we have a lot more to accomplish uh, before we start thinking about the campaign next year. But I'm really excited about this moment and how we're going to harness it so that we actually build back better than before we were in the pan uh, since before the pandemic. Any, any worries about your own reelection by any chance? Well, I always worry about my own reelection. I love this job and uh, and I know I have to earn it every single two years, um, but it's the reason why I go to every corner of my district. Uh, I listen to people about what, you know, what their concerns and anxieties are. Uh, I do my best to translate that into legislation and policy prescriptions that I fight for in Washington. Um, so I, uh, you know, certainly we're not at the campaign stage yet, but, uh, you know, I'm hopeful that my record will speak um, will speak to my ability to deliver for the folks I'm so privileged to represent.